Welcome to the vignette on what information is needed to calculate effect sizes. In meta-analyses, we express the outcome of a single experiment in a way that captures how big an effect is and how much it varies. There are three groups of effect sizes. Effect sizes based on means, effect sizes based on binary data, and effect sizes based on correlations. Correlations are well known and often reported in papers when appropriate, and so we will skip them here. We focus on standardized mean differences, because continuous data in an experimental manipulation is the most common outcome in the study we are looking at. Next, we will go through a number of important factors that you need to report. In MetaLab, selecting the correct effect size formula is done for you, if you provide all information needed. Now we start thinking about the design. Were there one or two groups of participants? Once you know, you can start data entry. Start with the number of participants. If it is just one group, leave the second field empty. Otherwise, fill out both n underscore 1 and n underscore 2, even if they are the same. Note that there is a potential pitfall. Sometimes experiments report on multiple conditions, but we focus here on the key comparison of your research question. This key comparison is usually very similar across papers. In the case of word segmentation, this would be whether infants listen longer to familiar or novel words. These words might then be matched or mismatched in some way, as in this example, but we separate this information into several rows. The next step is to find out whether there is one dependent variable or two for within participant designs. In between participant designs, there are always two measures. For example, we might measure whether infants look at the correct picture or how they react to something familiar versus novel. Depending on how this is coded, we get one or two measures. Because our example is word segmentation, we always have two dependent measures, looking times to familiar and novel words in the test phase of an experiment. Ok, now we know the design and how many dependent variables to expect. There is one more step before we can calculate effect sizes. We do not always have all the information to compute effect sizes from raw data. Since it is a within-participant design with two non-independent measures, we need two mean values and their standard deviations and the correlation between infants' reaction to familiar and novel test items. Luckily, we can also derive effect sizes from t-values or f-scores, but only when they are testing exactly the two within-participant scores against each other without any additional variable. For instance, the authors might have conducted an ANOVA where not only familiarity of test items, but also infant age was an independent variable. Here, the f-score on the main effect of familiarity includes several age groups, while we would need the effect by age group. Here are some examples of dependent variables and test statistics. It is important to be consistent in what x underscore 1 and x underscore 2 refer to. Is x underscore 2 infant's reaction to familiar items or to novel ones? You can take as a guide the predominant response in the literature. If familiar test items are overall generating a higher response than novel ones, code those as x underscore 1. Be sure to stick to this order across all entries, or your effect size will not code the crucial comparison you are interested in across papers in a consistent way. To be on the safe side, we always code all available data. Know that for the last few rows, we cannot compute effect sizes, as this paper does not report any information we could use to calculate effect sizes. In this case, we might want to contact authors. See also the vignette on additional information. To look at within participant design with one variable, we have to look at a different data set. Let's look at online word recognition, where infants see two objects on the screen and hear one label. Researchers usually report the proportion of looks to the target when it is being named. This is one dependent variable. When we look at this proportion alone, we might notice that we might get the wrong results if we were to compute effect sizes just based on those means and their variance. This is because looking at one of two objects has a chance performance of 0.5 and not 0, which would be the implicit assumption if we just calculate effect sizes based on this number. We thus want to note chance and use the second group slot for it. This way we can compute a difference, for example of 0.52 minus 0.5 and then compute the effect size, which will be as in the example very small. Now. What if we have two groups and their dependent variables? We now have to keep track of the number of participants per group, their ages and their dependent variables. To this end, we use underscores. 
we simply map all variables that might differ per group to underscore ones and underscore two respectively. To illustrate this case, we look at infants' non-native vowel discrimination. That means whether they can distinguish vowels that are not part of their native language system. We note group names to keep track of the condition we assign to group 1 and which to group 2. Note that usually the baseline condition will be group 2, because we expect the treatment effect to be larger than the baseline effect. All participant descriptors, such as infant age, follow this group assignment. The same holds for the dependent measure. x1 corresponds to the results from group 1, x2 comes from group 2, and so on. Only for t-tests and f-scores, we will still only have one number. Let's look at the final flowchart with some additional notes. The next step is entering data points. Remember to also enter papers where you, for now, cannot compute effect sizes, because you might want to contact authors and just add this information later as it comes in. We have previously mentioned that MetaLab takes care of calculating effect sizes for you automatically should you choose to use our spreadsheet infrastructure. However, you might want to calculate uh, effect sizes yourself or use another infrastructure or just want to see uh, how we calculate effect sizes. Uh, in that case, uh, you can go to our GitHub page, which is also linked from the MetaLab web page. And here you can use our uh, R script to see uh, what we're actually doing. Um, you will see that we have a decision tree based on the data structure, whether it's a between subject design or within subject design. And then um, it goes through all sorts of cases depending on what data are present. And we also document uh, where we have our formula from. Um, so you can use this to inform yourself on how to calculate effect sizes with MetaLab. Congratulations, you now know everything to build your own data set.